This is DJ Dr. Chris. And it's your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. Today I'm going to be talking about benefits of the sun. And I'm going to be discussing bradycardia. And after that, we'll pop up a bottle and see what comes out. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm so ready. Okay, Bree, how are you doing today? I'm good. Did you have a good e- Easter? Listeners, did y'all have a great Easter? I hope so. I did. In fact, I... Um, I tried something new. I did a, a reverse sear on some steaks. Have you ever done that before? I'm kind of new to no. that. No. But Usually you cook a steak, uh, like you sear it first, then stick it in the oven, and this is just the opposite. Oh my God, it came out so much better. So I highly recommend reverse searing. It's so good. Reverse searing. Uh, you'll just have to do it and I'll eat it. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be starting today. I'm going to be talking about the sun, benefits of the sun. All right. So... The sun usually has a bad reputation, right? Stay out of the sun, put on your SPF, you don't get skin cancer and all that. Well, that's not telling the whole story. There are a lot of positive things that come out of the sun, right? As you know, Brie, uh, vitamin D is, is the obvious one that most people know about. Vitamin D is good for bone health, it prevents rickets, it, it uh, aids in immune defense. And also vitamin D, a lack of vitamin D is implicated in multiple sclerosis. So um, that's why we see higher levels of MS in northern climates. But more than that, sunlight increases production of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter of the brain. And that's been uh, linked to reduce pain perception, uh, particularly with people with fibromyalgia. Um, There's kind of an overlap there with a seasonal affective disorder. So if you've got fibromyalgia, uh, get some sun. Right? You think it's the vitamin D? Well, it's been linked to it. And I mean, that, that's what we see with SAD or SAD. Um, you know, people in northern climates, I can attest this. I used to live in Boston. Uh, those long, dark winters are pretty bad. And, and I believe I read a study somewhere. Uh, don't quote me on this. I think in uh, the like Scandinavian cultures uh, where they have long, long winters where they barely see the sun, there's like much higher levels of suicide, actually. Yeah, that I have heard. Yeah. Or seasonal affective disorder. Like yeah. that yeah. is um, sad. So that's like, uh, as maybe I'll do a segment on that next week. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and then the other thing too is your circadian rhythms, your sleep wakefulness cycle. So most people know about melatonin. You know, um, as the sun goes down, your brain starts to secrete melatonin, which makes you sleepy. Um, and, you know, they're, you're told to stay away from electronics and your cell phone at night because the blue light can penetrate your eye, your retina, and sort of upset the whole melatonin process. Well, sunlight is actually what triggers the circadian rhythm in the first place. So that starts the whole process. Uh, so the sunlight is as important as melatonin as when it comes to circadian rhythms. Um, and let me give you a little quick physics lessons with, with light. So... Um, the wavelength determines how far things can penetrate. So that's why blue light's bad. So um, it's a lot like sounds. Like when you hear that car, it's like going by you, you only hear the bass and not like the hi-hats and stuff like that or the voices. It's because the lower end has that of the sound spectrum has a long wavelength. Higher or shorter wavelengths and frequencies really uh, don't penetrate stuff, whereas a longer wavelength does. So uh, when it comes to the, the color spectrum, blue penetrates the deepest to the longest wavelength. In fact, when you go scuba diving, and I've, I've done this before, it's crazy. The deeper you go, the, the, the more color you lose. It's like the first thing to go is red and yellow and orange, something in that order. And then we get to like 40 or 50 feet deep. It's like everything's just blue, just different uh, shades of blue. Which is Really? Kind of wild. Yeah. So it's kind I of didn't, I didn't know because I thought different the fish down there. Well, you know what? That makes sense because when you look at when you go scuba dive and you look at the fish and they're really pretty on the surface. Yep. But then when you get a little further down, they're just gray. Yeah, well, they're yeah, the bluish grayish, and that's why the ocean's blue, right? So yeah. I mean, on the, the top surface, you got a lot of color. In fact, if you're gonna go scuba diving, stay shallow. You get a lot more, more air. You get all the pretty colors. Um, unless you're gonna do like a deep dive and see like a shipwreck, that's just kind of cool. What's wild when you do like a like I did a 114 foot dive in Hawaii, everything's blue, but you bring a flashlight down with you. You look at a fish and it just looks blue to you, and then you shine a light on it, and it's like bright red and orange. It's so cool. <laughs> uh, that is so, neat. Yeah. So, but yeah. I, I don't swim that well, so I would never be doing that. 
Well, the good thing with scuba is it's not a lot. It's not really active. It's not really swimming. You're kind of just floating. <laughs> you kind of you're always striving for neutral buoyancy. It's like you, you kick every now and then. Uh, yeah, it's very low effort. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's the deal with the sunlight aspect of circadian rhythms. Uh, another substance created by the sun is nitric oxide, oxide, sorry, which is a vasodilator. I talked about this last week about breathing through your nose. It uh, stimulates nitric oxide production and it lowers your blood pressure because it relaxes your blood vessels. So you'll see in, uh, on average, you, know, you look at correlational studies, there's lower blood pressures the closer you are to the equator. And, and the inverse is true too, the higher, the more north you go. Um, and we've also found out that nitric oxide has an effect on blood sugar. In other words, you have lower blood sugar in, in warmer climates. Uh, so the question is, like, how do we get enough? Okay, so first of all, if you're north of, like, Georgia, like Atlanta and L.A. in the United States, uh, you don't get adequate sun throughout the year. So you have to think about supplementation or getting some sort of light um, or taking a trip down to Florida uh, during the winter. But down here, we're pretty lucky. I mean, a tanning bed. Um, yeah, I think there's positive and negative tanning beds. I, you know, I, I got to look into that one. But basically, you know, there's vitamin D in milk. It was basically injected into milk. Um, you need to drink about six glasses of milk a day to get adequate vitamin D levels. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. And it's hard to get it in foods. It's probably in, probably in liver. I feel like liver's got everything. But um, <clears throat> anyways, so if you're in Florida and you're, you know, how much sun do you get? There's a couple rules. Obviously, like your skin tone matters. Um, time of year, time of day matters. Uh, how your skin responds to sun matters. But there's a couple things to know. So uh, there's different um, radiation that comes from the sun because that sunlight is uh, UV radiation. There's UVA, UVB, and UVC. Now, UVC, uh, all those lights have to penetrate the atmosphere. Uh, and to hit the ground, and they don't all make it. So UVC doesn't touch, ever penetrate the Earth's atmosphere, so you don't have to worry about UVC. Uh, UVA can kind of always make it to the ground, uh, but that's a non-damaging one. And UVB depends on the time of day. So it's a shorter um, uh, wavelength, so it doesn't make it as far uh, unless it's overhead. So UVB is the one that can damage DNA, and that's the one that causes skin cancer. So when it's directly overhead, because this all has to come uh, down to like the angle of, you know, uh, the, the sun in relation to the earth. So UVA, as soon as the sun's up, it's hitting the ground. UVB doesn't until it gets kind of closer to overhead. So uh, that's the one to be fearful of and put on your SPF. So a good rule of thumb is that if your shadow is as tall as you, it's probably safe, depending on your skin type. Whereas if you have a short shadow, you need to put on uh, some SPF because that UVB is starting to penetrate the atmosphere. So I think SPF is extremely important because there's so many people, especially in Florida, that come in with skin cancer lesions. And yep. some of them are benign, but others can turn like some, I mean, lesions that are skin cancer. Some are benign and some of them are like melanoma and they have to get them um, like cut off by dermatologists and stuff. And some can be worse. Like some people die from skin cancer. So you just need to be smart about the amount that you get. Yeah. And I think part of it is like, we get a lot of golfers here, especially in Naples. We got people go out at that nine o'clock tea time. They're probably fine in the morning, but they're still out there, you know, doing their 18 holes and like noon hits and maybe they haven't put their sunscreen on. And that's the stuff that damages you. That middle of the day type of sun. So that's Either way, sun is good. I think sun is important. You just need to limit the amount of time. And if you can't limit, limit, limit the amount of time that you're out there, then definitely use sunscreen. So that's what I have for you today, Brit. Well, thank you, Dr. Chris. Uh -huh. What do you have for me? You're going to talk about some bradycardia? I think I'm going to talk about bradycardia this week and your weekly dose of BS. Um, so like last week, we talked about tachycardia. And I just wanted to like do the opposite. So according to the American Heart Association, bradycardia is just a slow heart rate. Bradycardia is usually like, um, like some people have natural bradycardia where there's nothing to be concerned about, but then there's other people that have it for other reasons. Um, in general, for adults, a resting heart rate 
of 60 bits, 60, 60 beats per minute or lower is considered bradycardia. There are some exceptions, like I said, like if you fall into a deep sleep, your heart rate will drop. That's any adult. Like your heart rate will be lower if you're asleep. That's normal. Or if you're an athlete, if you are like a marathon runner, a football player, basketball player, where your heart is conditioned to have a lower beats per minute, that's okay for those type of people. But the normal adult American person, their heart rate should not fall below 60. So different causes of bradycardia, um, problems with your SA node. Sometimes you would need a pacemaker to make sure your heart is actually doing the right rhythm and the right amount of beats per minute. Um, problems with conductivity. There may be a metabolic issue. There may be damage to the heart, like a heart attack or heart disease, or there are certain heart medications that will lower the blood pressure as a side effect. Um, some symptoms of bradycardia is fatigue or feeling weak, dizziness or lightheadedness, confusion, fainting, shortness of breath, difficulty with exercise, or in extreme cases, cardiac arrest. We don't want the last one. Um, I usually associate cardiac arrest more with tachycardia than bradycardia, but I guess it can happen either way, right? It can happen either way because your heart stops. <laughs> so... <laughs> Treatment of bradycardia is usually you can be treated with medication. You may not need any treatments at all, but like I said, you could, if it's still below a certain beats per minute, your doctor may suggest the pacemaker um, to help regulate the rhythm or speed it up if it's needed. I had a friend that she was only 20 something and she had a pacemaker and um, because her heart, her heart rate was so low. So she had a pacemaker in place. So if she, if it dropped below, I think 50, it would go off. So that way it would pick it like she, and she could feel it. Would she get like a flutter and, and like and feel anxiety? Cause there she is went for anxiety because she knew what it was. Cause we, I remember like she, she noticed it more when we would drink wine. So mm. we'll be sitting there watching TV, drinking wine. And then she would be like, Oh crap. And she like, yeah. she just knew that it was about the, like it did something. So I think, I think wine's a vasodilator, which will lower your blood pressure, probably lower your heart rate. Because I know there's something called POTS, uh, which is a sort of response where your blood pressure drops so, or your, is it your heart rate? Yeah, your heart rate drops so low that then it, it basically, try, because of homeostasis, will kick the other way and, and start to flutter really fast. And then you'll get the symptoms of anxiety. That is true, too. Mm -hmm. So the body's always trying to compensate, but it kind of goes on a roller coaster ride. Is because it knows it's not supposed to be doing this. So it's like, oh crap, I need to fix it. And then it's like, oh crap, I overfixed it. So <laughs> it's a mess. It's like hitting a patch of ice when you're driving. It's like, turn really hard to right, turn really hard to left. It's just trying, trying to correct to yourself. Yeah, yeah, basically. Well, that is interesting. What else you got? Anything else? Um, that's it for, um, you know, our informational or educational portion let's pop open a couple bottles and see what comes out okay let's do it well okay i got uh i'm drinking my wine here but i, I just thought of something while i was opening the wine here um orthostatic hypertension is something we should probably mention too very common cause of dizziness what that really means is when you go from laying down and you go to seated or standing really fast you get a sudden, and it has to do with the change of your, uh, the position of your heart. You get a sudden drop in your blood pressure, and I'll give you that, like, feel like, like you feel like you're going to black out kind of sensation. So that's just something to be aware of as well. We can always do a segment on that. So right. we go a little bit further into detail why it happens, why it happens to some people and not other people. Because there's usually a medical condition that usually causes that. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. I'd love to hear your recommendations on what to do about that, because I see that pretty often I'm like, Oh, just, um, you know, use your muscles a whole bunch or sit up slow, or <laughs> I don't really know the best recommendation for that. So I'd love to hear your input on that. If someone's been diagnosed with it, they have to sit up slow because if they can't just go from sitting to standing or laying to standing real quick, cause then they'll pass out. Mm. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So what are you drinking tonight? Well, tonight, of course I'm back on a, 
You were saying? I would say. So I'm going on vodka. Oh, okay. Vodka and club soda tonight. Mm-hmm. Right. But I have muddled cucumber and mint in it, in it. They give it a little flavor. Did you make that or did you make Michael make that for you? I made it. Michael's too busy um, trying to grill his chicken right now. <laughs> I, I am drinking a Klein Pinot Noir. It's rare for me to have a Pinot Noir, but it is delicious. Pinot Noir to me is very hit or miss. You can have That's some. Michael's favorite wine. He loves Pinot Noir and he drinks whatever brand or whatever he just likes to taste because it is usually lighter than others. Yeah, definitely. All right. So uh, do you have some good news for us? I do. This one made me so happy. So good news of the week. This is um, a heartfelt story out of North Carolina again this week. Um, so apparently there was a kind of contest at um, Edenton's White Oak Elementary School and they nominated a custodian. His name is Raymond Brown. Well, he didn't win the National North Carolina School Hero Award. And one of the moms was so upset that she led a charge to show him how much she and the other school students and parents appreciates him. So the principal, her name is Michelle, told some news stations, this probably made Mr. Brown feel like he was this most special person in the world. And he really, like, you can see that he tries to build relationships with him, like with his students. He's not just someone that just goes to work just to work. He makes people feel welcome. So no one knows that better than Adrian Wood. So apparently Adrian is the parent of the child named Amos, and Amos has autism. Mr. Brown took Amos underneath his wing and took it as a personal, like, not challenge, but a personal, just like victory to make Amos feel at home because sometimes people with autism have a hard time interacting with their peers. So he got attached to this little boy and he would always give him the nickname as Famous Amos. And this just made Amos's day. So the parent wanted to make sure Mr. Brown knew how much that meant to her and how much that meant to other families that have children with disabilities, that he went above and beyond to, of his daily duties. So guess what they did for him? What they did? She, they, they did a platform and within a week they raised $35,000 Nearly 2,000 people donated it from around the globe to give to Mr. Brown as a kudos and to say thank you. I was going to say, I hope they gave it to him. I, yeah, I, they gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> so like, thank you, We Mr. raised $35,000 for autism. And if I was like, Mr. Brown, I'd be like, damn it. <laughs> no, they gave it to Mr. Brown, right, which good. I think is so sweet. And I think he's a sweet person because... Not everyone understands like what as a parent, what you go through every day. And for someone to know that your child is going to school and is being protected or not even protected, but knowing someone's looking out for them, I'm sure that meant the world to that mom. And no one really understands what's like to have that keychain that custodians have, right? That they exactly. Have four keys. You can hear them come a mile away. <laughs> that would drive me crazy walking over that. <laughs> oh my gosh. But... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. A round Brown. of applause for you. Yes. Okay, Bree, are you ready for the common sense questions of the day? Um, I don't think you're ready because my brain is firing today. Oh, yeah? Well, I was four for four last week, if you remember. Um, I think that was a fluke. Well, okay, fine. We'll call it a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Yes. What's full of holes, but still holds water? Say that one more time. What's full of holes, but still holds water? When it's Nothing. full of holes. Yeah. Oh, um, a watering pail. Well, what? no. <laughs> it has holes in it and it holds water. A watering pail? Does it mean like a pitcher? No, a pitcher is a pitcher of water. Well, like you, the thing you water your flowers with. All right. So what's a watering pail? So it's a bucket of holes? 
I mean, it doesn't have holes in the bottom, but it has like holes in the top. Mm. You're circumventing the point. No. <laughs> That's not the answer. Okay. Back to the drawing board. You mean like one hole at the top? No, there's like multiple holes at the top. What's, do they serve a purpose? Or are they decoration? When you water your flowers, it comes out. Hmm. I'll uh, have to put a picture oh, on Oh, I hear time, though. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right? Yeah, but that's not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. What's full of holes? I hope, I wonder if anybody else at home knows this. What's full of holes, but still right, holes Let's water. put it this way. Okay, the... The container or whatever you want to call it has holes in the same location where there's water. So it's not oh. like you can't like tilt it and then, you know, you reach the spot like the, the you know, the sprout or whatever you, whatever you call it, where the sprout, holes sprout, are. Sprout. 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 <laughs> uh, a sink? Hmm. It's pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> That's also not the answer. <laughs> well, so the sink doesn't count because, you you know, you can plug the sink. Yeah, it has a hole so it can hold the water. Yeah, but I guess. You never said I couldn't right. plug nothing up. You're getting too technical. <laughs> oh, geez. A raindrop. A cloud. These are all good answers. <laughs> 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 but not the right answer. Oh, what's the answer then? Okay, it's a sponge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, made, I got it. I got it. You really worked your way around the spectrum. <laughs> yes, I did. I mean, I was close in all the regards. The sponge is in the sink, and yeah. a cloud looks like a sponge sometimes. So I'm going to have to write this website that uh, is a bad question. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What flies without wings? A frisbee. I don't think I like this website. <laughs> <laughs> You're also right, but that's not the right answer. What flies without wings? Hmm. You know, I like your your answer better. I'm going to give that to you. The answer is time, but I like the first. But time, it makes sense. It because time flies. Yeah, but that's more of an expression. I think your your answer is actually way better. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, last one. Where will you find roads without vehicles, forests without trees, and cities without houses? Where will you find roads without vehicles, forests without trees, and cities without houses? Your dreams. A book. <laughs> Bree, you are like. On a different level today. <laughs> Maybe my brain's firing <laughs> too much. You've been getting your sleep. You've been hydrated, eating well. Like you're just on a full cylinder. I wouldn't level. say eating well because I had Chick Fil A and I just had pasta. Uh, okay, retracted. Uh, <laughs> that is not the answer. But uh, you want to try again? Okay, roads without cars. Forest without trees. A forest. Without a tree or trees, then how can you call it a forest if it doesn't have trees? Oh, that is the crux of the problem. Nowhere. And cities without houses. Well, you can have a city without a house. Where? Well, easily. Like Chicago didn't really have houses. They have high rises. They have condos and apartments and buildings. You are just hacking every one of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, the answer is maps. <laughs> oh. Well, okay. I, I'm proud of you. I mean, you're really like brainstorming and thinking outside the box in these. So uh, I'm going to give you a three for three on that because I liked all of your answers better than the ones supplied on the, the website here. I mean, but the ones on the website is kind of true. I just need to be a little bit more simple. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, we, I was actually talking to my brother uh, yesterday about um, one of the funniest part of the, the show Friends. Do you yeah. remember that episode where they go to London and Joey has to step into the map? <laughs> the map. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyways, I digress. So, all right, three for three. I'll give it to you because those were awesome answers. This website, their answers were worse. So we'll just let's them again. Yeah. Well, do you want another one? We'll try one more. All right. What word looks the same upside down and backward? What word? This is kind of fun. Looks the same upside down and backwards. Upside down and backwards. Oh. Oh. <laughs> like O H? No. Because that's what? not the same. Backwards. Because mm. I would say mom, but it doesn't look like the same upside down because then that turns into wow. Right. Eyes. E-Y-E-S? Or E-Y-E. E no. Oh, I guess because upside down with the Y is different. Yeah. I mean, that's not really a letter. Well, and the E would also be backwards. Mm. A? A, no, because then A would be like, well, it depends on capital lowercase, it looks like a V upside down, basically, with a line in the middle. I'm thinking lowercase, but okay. But even still. Well, I give up on this one. This one, I just flopped. Well, I mean, I do think capital letter I would work, but that's not the answer. The answer is swims. This one actually is legitimate. Swims. Swim? <coughs> swims. S-W-I-M-S. Oh. Because, S -W -I -M -S. because the M turns into a W when you reverse it. You go upside down. But it swims like, somebody says swims. Like write it down on a piece of paper and then turn it upside down. Well, I guess then turn it backwards. <laughs> you got to turn it upside down. If I turn swims upside down, I, I'll have to do that because that doesn't make sense. To me. <laughs> Whatever. I see it. I don't know. All right, let's move on. So restaurant of the week in Naples. Are we sticking to Naples? Yes. Well, I'm sticking to Naples because I hadn't been anywhere. Yeah. All right. What do you got? So there? I am going to talk about the Turtle Club because I'm pissed off that they're booked until the end of April. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I got a, I got a connection there. My buddy Steve Bogdan, he works there. I'll see if I can get you in there. Please. Because for Sunset, of course, I want it, but they're booked until the end of April. And it's just because it's season. So season's almost over. Oh, I can't wait for it to be over so I can actually go back to the places I love and eat. Yes, yeah, so that's what the secret of Naples is during the summer when everyone leaves. We got, uh, like, you go down to Fifth Ave, it's always like two for one dinners, free bottle of wine. It's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know how long that's going to happen. I mean, I think uh, this area is becoming less and less seasonal. It is becoming less and less seasonal. So yeah. I, I feel like we should stop talking about Naples because I don't want anybody else to move here. <laughs> it is the hidden gem of Florida. Okay, so Troll Club, what do you what do you like about it? Like. <laughs> My favorite, of course, they have um really good um fish tacos. They have my favorite Parmesan fries. They have oysters. I'm obsessed with oysters. Um, you can do a half or a whole, or I mean six, half or a dozen. Um they is then then the atmosphere is you can sit inside, but nobody really sits inside. They sit outside because it's on the sand, it's on the beach. And so you get to like the whole beach vibe, the waves, and you get to see sunset if you go around that time. I mean, you can literally see, sit like on a table with your feet in the sand, right? Yeah, it's on the beach. Yep. That's a cool spot. Yeah. That's the thing about Naples, it's kind of missing a lot of places in the water, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I like Deep Lagoon. Have you been there? No. Oh, well, I actually have been there. I went on a date there one time a long time ago. That was before. It was something there. else before it was Deep Lagoon. I can't remember. It used to be Randy's Fish Market. Yes. And then they yeah. changed. I guess they have new owners or whatever. Yeah, the North Naples are on 41. I think they're actually moving locations pretty soon. They're going just a few blocks south. But uh, really nice restaurant. They have Triple Tail which is like a fish I'd never seen. So I moved to this coast really, uh, which is delicious. Uh, any, anytime I see triple tail on the menu, I order it. It's amazing. Like flaky and just buttery and delicious. So what's so special about deep lagoon? 
I just told you the triple tail. Just the triple tail. That's it. <laughs> now, Nothing, I mean, the atmosphere honestly, sucks. No, the atmosphere is triple nice. tail is good. They got, they got outdoor seating. The service was excellent, but they also have triple tail. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Chris, for that. You're welcome. All right. We got anything else, Brittany? I think that's it for this week. Um, I'm not sure um, what we're going to have planned or what's in store for y'all next week, but I know at the very end of April, we're going to have a special podcast, um, probably a special guest and just some fun little goodies, some surprises. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. I also want to give a shameless plug. I, uh, this recent blog I did on Beth the Sun kind of inspired me. I wrote down a list of sort of nine priorities for your health, things like movement, nutrition, hydration, sunlight, and a bunch of other things. Uh, so I created this nine-point checklist with resources and all the, the checkpoints. So if you go to my website, www.dynamic-physio.com, you can download that checklist for free. So please check it out, download it. All you need is uh, put in your email and it's free for you. And there's links to tons of resources there. Other than that, Bree, are we ready to wrap it up? We are. This is DJ Dr. Chris. And it's your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. This is Poppin' Balls. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.